Imagine having digital information available in a contact lens. Welcome back to another Text to Nation interview. Joining us is Drew Perkins, CEO of Mojo Vision. Thanks for being with us, Drew. Thanks for having me. Well, it sounds like science fiction, but you are for real. So tell us what Mojo Vision and Mojo Lens are all about. Um, so Mojo Lens is about bringing you the information you want um, at the moment you want it while letting you look like you. Um, these devices, mobile phones, are going to be you know, replaced over the next several years uh, with some form of augmented reality. Uh, at least most people in the industry believe that, and, and we do as well. And the question is what, is, what is augmented reality? What does it look like? How is it implemented? Um, majority of the uh, large technical uh, tech companies out there uh, from Apple on down are working on some form of glasses. Perhaps some form, the ideal is something like what you're wearing now, Fred, but, but digital glasses that are able to give you all the information you want, make it look like you're looking at uh, something physical that's not really, not really there, a screen uh, or some sort. And, um, uh, but in reality, all of the uh, firms have only is able to develop very large, hot, heavy goggles and, and, and headwear that, that um, is not going to uh, attract people to try to replace this thing. It's, they're just not. And we would like to really realize that vision of the future and, and be able to let you look like you and, and have a normal relationship with people, not look weird, but get the information you want, whether it's your a message uh, someone's trying to send you, whether it's a bit of information about a product you want to look at, uh, whether it's the weather, whether it's stock price, whether it's you know your grocery list, whatever it is, you know, whatever kind of information, be able to get it when you want it, exactly when you want it, know that you're going to even want it, and but just look normal and, and look like a normal person. So you're putting the technology into contact lens form? Um, that's right. So our vision is um, most people want to look like themselves. Um, even people that wear glasses you know, often prefer not to even be uh, wearing their glasses. Glasses change, change your look uh, and, and appearance. And most people want to look like they're naturally born. And um, so it drives the contact lens industry. About a third of people that need to wear, have some form of vision correction choose contact lenses because they want to look like themselves. And, and, and our thought is, if you could have a contact lens that had the same information as a pair of glasses, which don't exist today, um, then a good portion of the, of, uh, of the planet or the populace would want that instead of the glasses. And especially with the way the big, hot, heavy glasses and goggles are today, um, they would prefer that. So the question is, you know, Western, when we started this, you know, five and a half years ago, so is that possible? If it's possible, how, how, how can you possibly do it? And so we've been working for you know, the last five and a half years uh, as a company figuring out how to do that and have done that. We've turned science fiction into science fact. And I have worn and a number of other people have worn a contact lens that's practically invisible and is able to show us information and exactly what we want. So as you said, it sounds impossible. <laughs> how do you power this? How do you charge this? Tell, tell me how you've solved these, these issues. Yeah, so we're developing a contact lens that first has power in it, has batteries um, in it that are able to, to power it, um, power the, there's a computer in a, process, a microprocessor, there's displays, there's sensors, there's um, image sensors and, and accelerometers and IMUs and all the things that are in, you know, pretty much almost everything that's in here is we're putting into a contact lens in a fairly invisible way. It's very, very small. Um, of course, it doesn't have as doesn't have the battery that drives the this thing. It doesn't have the huge display. We have a display that's less than a millimeter in size uh, that's in the contact lens that the wearer can't see. That doesn't block their vision, and somebody looking at the wearer also can't see because it's the size of a you know a speck of dirt basically. Um, so we're fitting all the sort of functionality, although not as much of it, not as big a processor, not as big a battery, not as big a uh, amount of storage or anything like that. We're relying on the cloud and the contact lens is 
communicating with another device that you wear that that um, that uh, will then relay information to the cloud, or perhaps to this you'll uh, for a while still have this in your pocket for some applications. Someday we envision that entirely going away as well, but um, um, it works as a system and and between the contact lens, uh, another device you're wearing and, and the cloud, you're gonna get all the same functionality you have this, um, all the same functionality you have on your laptop computer, but far more because it's a wearable uh, device that can do everything your smartwatch can do and your Fitbit can do and, and uh, much, much more. There's many, many medical applications and, and things that um, can, can be developed um, one when you're in a contact lens form factor that's in contact with a bodily fluid and in contact with your body the whole time you're wearing it. And this would be rechargeable and enough battery to get you through a day? Or yes, it's rechargeable, it's wirelessly recharged, just like the modern cell phone is wirelessly recharged through Qi or, or uh, some type of uh, protocol like that. And um, our goal is to make it uh, last all day or a substantial uh, fraction of the day, um, just, just the way that this thing does. What are the chief applications that you are looking at for this technology? So we think that the lead, the first applications are ones that you want to be hands-free and eyes up. Okay. There are so many applications where this is, is not practical. It's not possible. Um, it's, it's a distraction. I mean, you can't service a car and hold this thing at the same time. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, for instance, it's hard to do any kind of sports or athletics while you're with this, you know, when you're trying to run with this and try to look at it, it's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, for instance, you can't ski very well holding this thing. Um, so, you know, you can't play basketball um, holding that thing. So any type of applications like that, um, any kind of service, um, kind of thing, hospitality, you don't want your concierge, you know, walking around looking at this, you want looking at you and, and helping you. Um, so any kind of thing where that's people to people, or you need to focus on some other object, some device, some thing that you're working on, um, any of those kind of things. How did this come about? Um, so, um, when I was, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur and, and when I was developing my last company, I also developed cataracts in my eyes, uh, not intentionally, of course. And um, I had cataract surgery and in cataract surgery, which is the most common surgery on the planet, it's incredibly fast and easy and everybody gets it when they get in the 60s, 70s, you know, older uh, people, I got it in, in my 30s, I uh, developed cataracts. Um, it's a partly genetic thing as well. And um, in cataract surgery, they, they take the crystalline lens, the part of your eye that automatically focuses or helps you focus on, on things you're looking at. They pull that out and they slide in a, another lens that is just a piece of plastic. That's called an intraocular lens. And um, as I said, you, you, uh, you come out of the operating room uh, from that operation, it's about 10 minutes very quick, but um, you can immediately see very well. And I had myopia. Um, you're wearing glasses, perhaps you have myopia, perhaps you have hyperopia or, st or astigmatism or, or presbyopia, one of those. And um, you walk out and you can see, you know, pretty well 2020 again, at least at some distances, but not at all distances. And um, I, I immediately saw the you know, the, the deficiencies there that uh, I couldn't see perfectly in all distances. I thought, why with today's technology, why isn't it possible to be able to have walk out of that operating room with eyes better than I was born with? Okay, well, with eyes that could see at all distances and see well. And my, you know, one of my favorite TV shows when I grew up in the 70s was uh, The Six Million Dollar Man. Uh, Steve Austin, the bionic man, had, you know, this bionic eye that he was given that could see, you know, a telephoto lens, uh, for instance. I thought, why, why can't I have that? It's, it's been 40 years since that television show. Why haven't we done that? I'm a very deep tech uh, person and certainly I've got to be able to invent that. So I, uh, a few years later, after I was uh, ready, done with my previous company and ready to start a new company, I dove in on this and 
immediately discovered there were some uh, companies out there trying to develop this technology and a lot of people working on it, but it wasn't quite there. And I thought to myself, well, first of all, it's been a long time, been 40 years, computing technology has come a long way also. And there's this concept of augmented reality. These, these two things ought to be merged. First of all, if you're going through all the expense of trying to develop some form of, of bionic vision and, and uh, vision assistance, you ought to be able to integrate modern computing technology as well through augmented reality. And I also further thought, you know, um, I don't think I want to develop the first product as being implanted. That might be a little difficult to, to raise money for. So I thought, well, what wouldn't be implanted? Well, contact lens would be the nearest way to get the same sort of uh, functionality for a m larger number of people and it'd be more uh, a fundable product and project. So um, it was just, uh, you know, I, I'm instantly made that that pivot and and uh, here we are now, five years later. And last fall, you were named a winner in NASA's iTech competition. Tell us about that. That's right, that's right. Um, NASA has uh, an annual or um, biannual competition um, looking for all the best technology um, over the planet and especially within the United States, uh, primarily for their missions to get to the moon, to Mars, et cetera. And, you know, they surveyed, you know, over a thousand companies, I believe, and, um, and technology, and we came out on top. They, they named three winners, and, and we were one of those uh, three winners. So they certainly saw uh, the same vision and, and understood how our technology will be able to help them in, in many ways from, you know, astronauts themselves. Perhaps we can help them uh, lighten, uh, lighten the aircraft or the aircraft, the spacecraft that uh, can help them send more equipment and further and, and uh, more readily and, and cheaper, et cetera. Um, but also all the people on the ground, the ground uh, crew and, and um, anyone in logistics or in, in uh, any of NASA's uh, uh, you know, parts of their mission, basically. So as of today, what does your roadmap look like for coming out with real products? Mm -hmm. So, so far, we have developed a number of proof of concept devices, uh, including, like I said, full contact lenses with power, with communications, with um, projection displays in them. And a number of people we've, we've put the latest device on. What we've been working on since then, uh, for the last 18 months roughly, has been a true prototype. A prototype contact lens that has all of the technology in it. It's not quite done yet. Um, and uh, we envision another cycle on this to get it to a full product, but um, we're on the verge of, of having that, that first true prototype done. We will then um, uh, refine that into the final product. We all medical, all uh, contact lenses are medical devices and medical devices in the United States have to be are regulated by the FDA and we need to get FDA approval or, or clearance uh, to be able to offer that to uh, offer it for sale. So uh, in order to do that, you need to uh, have a clinical trial involving a lot of people uh, to gather the evidence to put in, for, in front of the FDA to prove to them that it's safe um, and that it's effective. And so we have those steps ahead of us, um, but over the next, the next few years, uh, we'll, be, we'll be busy uh, doing those steps. But you know, a few years from now, we hope to be able to be selling this on the open market in the United States, as well as um, in other countries around the globe. And um, uh, we have a number of additional uh, product generations. Uh, we have a lot of technology that'll be part of the first generation, but we're always thinking and, and uh, already have improvements and additional capabilities and things that we envision that will be in second generation, third generation, fourth generation, et cetera. And this is gathering data, everything that the wearer would see? That people it's, would wonder about the privacy issues, et cetera, what happens with all of that? Um, absolutely. And we believe that um, um, we need to make sure that, that we're very well trusted. People need to trust us as a company that the device that they're putting on their eye is first of all, not going to hurt them. It's going to help them. Um, but also that it will keep them secure in both 
physically as well as um, their their you know virtual security or in the in the uh, uh, all their information about it. So um, it does have. Um, we are in, in, in. We are seeing what you are seeing, but we're not storing any of that um, data. We're not allowing anybody to um, get access to that kind of information. All that information belongs to you. Uh, you're the person seeing it. Uh, to the, the wearer is seeing it, and the only information that will ever get out is something that they they uh, want to let out. So, do you see this as something that's going to make us all, if we're wearing these? Uh, have the capability of having almost not Google inside your head, but Google in front of your face all the time or, or, or the equivalent to that, having all the information that you would want or need. Absolutely. That's, that's the goal. You know, Google's goal since they were, they came into existence was to get all the world's information, make it available to you. And now we're trying to make it available instantly. And, and even, uh, you know, with even less friction than, than Google itself. So we want to be able to, you know, if, if uh, a device can be more part of your life and, and, and participating in your life, it can know, um, help you be more effective in everything that you're doing and, and uh, help you remember all the information that you encounter and, and uh, come into uh, contact with, for an instance, um, but have more uh, efficient access to all the other information out there. Really, really interesting. And a million more questions I could ask, but our time is a bit limited. For more information, the best place to go is mojo.vision. You can get the information there on, on what the company is doing. Drew Perkins, look forward to speaking to you again. And thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you, Fred. <laughs>